Hey guys, my name is Shy, and this is the weekly reading for... I don't know what the date is. This is, this is the week leading up to the full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio, and I just opened this box of tarot cards, and what was at the bottom was the tower. It was the first thing I saw. <laughs> and, you know, I always shuffle before I put my cards away, so sometimes if I see a card when I pull the box out, I know that's the card. So we're, we're, we're bringing out the tower. <laughs> and... I don't know, I feel like I need to just start by describing a little bit where I'm at at the moment <laughs> because I feel completely out of it right now. Completely out of it. Not in a bad way. I actually feel quite peaceful. I feel like, well, what I've been working on lately is really releasing a ton of just like old stuck energy, right? Kind of dismantling egoic structures, you know, another round of these kind of ego death experiences. And I was actually just at the park laying in the grass in the sun, um, communicating with my Syrian guides because they apparently really like to communicate on the grass in the sun. <laughs> and what they were describing to me was that I am going through this period of like like another round of this releasing of the ego, right? Of releasing of the mind, of releasing of the ego, and all of these like conditionings and structures and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, right? That, that we are always doing, but periodically we are doing much more intensely than others. But um, this is happening so that I can evolve into a more open, um, and more like universal channel where I am able to communicate with and receive energies that are extremely different from myself, it's, like extremely different from, it's like there's not even any way to describe it because uh, it's like tuning into a type of energy that is from a completely different primordial soup than what we have in our own multiverse. It's like there are energies out there like from entirely different universes and it's like entirely different multiverses this is like entirely different something entirely different altogether like a completely different primordial soup of probability is the only way i know how to like get at it um it's it's like there's not even any way to imagine it because how do you imagine something that doesn't even exist inside your own universe right how, how do you even imagine that this is a completely different thing um so that requires this like kind of breakdown of the self and which it's like this softening and opening up process. And I'm explaining all this because of course this isn't, isn't just me. Um, it's never just me when I receive a message. It's all, it's always like, you know, a whole group of people who we're all, a whole group of souls. We're always going through these shifts and transformations in groups, right? each in our own unique ways, each in with our own unique flavor, and it manifests in a different ways. But at the end of the day, it's like the same type of base level energy work. It's the same type of thing, right? We go through these cycles in, in soul groups. So this isn't just me. This is anyone who's tuning into this message and finding that it's resonating, right? Um, and so I'm also describing all of this because this is what this, to me, this is the heart of the upcoming Scorpio full moon. You know, we have other things going on this week. Like, I'm going to put them all in the box down below for anyone who's interested. It's like Jupiter's moving into Aries, which is a huge, massive shift. Huge shift, right? That That's Jupiter, ha like, beginning the new Jupiter year, like like the, the year of Jupiter, right? Jupiter takes 12 years to go around the sun and for Jupiter to be entering Aries, that's a brand new Jupiter year. That's a huge, huge completion of a cycle and a beginning of a brand new cycle, but I feel like it's completely overshadowed by the intensity of this full moon and Scorpio energy. I mean, maybe for some people who are much more tuned into Jupiter and much more tuned into um, Aries energy that, that they're going to be feeling that more, but for me, I'm way more tuned into like full moons and Scorpio energy. So this um, this full moon in Scorpio, this full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio is is stealing the show, right? We're also having um, Gemini, uh, sorry, Mercury going retrograde in Gemini and my moon is in Gemini. So I'm already feeling it like my mind, you know, the unwinding of the mind and the unwinding of my ability to speak properly. Um, I always know my, you know, I've been doing videos for long enough now that my videos get very strange during Mercury retrograde because I like lose the, I lose my, ability to speak, uh, like I start, start tripping over my tongue. Um, and for, you know, gem for Mercury to be going retrograde in Gemini in my moon sign, it's like, you know, 
And it's funny because my moon is in the eighth house. So this is going to be, this is all, it's all connected, all connected, right? But anyway, so I feel like that is actually all entirely overshadowed by the lunar eclipse. And I'm feeling that, you know, the lunar, the lunar eclipse is one week from now. It's happening on Sunday, the 15th. Um, but the, like, this is like a vortex that goes for like at least two weeks, right? At least two weeks from a week before to a week after, but it, it's like, it's, it's huge, right? It's this, this tower moment, right? The shaking of the boughs, um, even the shaking of the roots. <sighs> so that's where I'm at. And you know, the other thing I just want to throw out there is that the energy has been shifting so fast. Um, but like in, in a really weird way, it's doing these weird like loops, 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 loops. And for me personally, like in my local environment, it's really reflected in <laughs> what jumps out with the wheel of fortune, right? Everything shifting, going around in cycles and spirals. And this particular wheel is actually a snail shell, which is this spiral, right? The spiral path. Um, anyway, so, you know, I, I even like read the weather as a reflection of current energies. Um, which I know might sound weird because of course the weather is different everywhere, right? But to me, anything I see in my local, anything I see in my reality is a reflection of the energy in my reality. So the weather here has been bizarre. Um, typically like I live in the desert and typically by May we're like well into summer and it should just be hot and dry every day for months and months and months, right? The weather here is very predictable in the summer, um, which is like the summer is like 10 months out of the year. <laughs> um, but it is like still cold and we have, we've had a couple days where it's been hot and then I've had to turn on the air conditioner and then it drops below freezing. And then like the plants are getting all weird because the plants don't know what's going on. Cause it's, it's been hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, like flowers are dying. <laughs> and then it's been raining a lot, which is bizarre because it doesn't rain here very often. Um, and it's getting to the point where I can't even figure out what to wear. Yesterday I had to change my clothes three times because I was trying to get dressed to go out. Um, and it was hot and sunny. So I put on a dress and then it started raining and got really windy. And then I had to put on pants. And then when I was out, I was, it got honey. It's like sunny again. And I was like, I could have been in my dress. And I was getting a little aggravated with myself because I was like, I should be able, like I should have, I kept, I kept doing the, I should have, would have, could have, like I should have, should have, should have this. I should have that, should have this. Look at this. I, I planned wrong. Look at this. I should have known better. I look at this. I should have been able to predict it. And then I realized that, oh my God, the, the, all this whole weird shifting chaos of everything being weird, everything being unpredictable, everything doing these bizarre loops. It's like, is it coming or going? Is it hurry up or wait? Blah, 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 blah. All of that is a message in and of itself. It's like, we're, we're in the chaos guys. We're in the chaos and we cannot expect ourselves to predict it. We cannot expect ourselves to know what's coming. Um, we cannot expect anything to stay the same for more than like a couple of minutes at this point. <laughs> and all we can do, it, 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 all of this, it's like forcing us to let go, right? It's that ego death, forcing you to just dismantle all of your structures and just let it all go and just float in the waves because that's, that's all we can do at this point. Wow, very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen this Two of Wands. I use this deck quite a bit and I don't recognize this card. Um, that <laughs> I, I want to read um, the thing in the book on this one. Red-tailed yellow hawk, fledgling, readiness, decisions, planning and discovery, progress, the start of an endeavor, taking a risk. What goes through a bird's head the first time they try to fly? As they hop off the edge and plummet towards the ground, are they feeling trepidation, fear, a sense of rightness driven by the force of instinct? And as they open their wings and catch the air, gaining altitude and control for the first time, do they feel relief, accomplishment, joy in finding their purpose and performing the action that every aspect of their body has evolved for? Is each unique in their reactions, feelings, and eagerness to step off the edge, or do they just fly? <laughs> that's what it feels like we're doing doesn't it just stepping off the edge into the unknown because um you know i always see the full moons as bringing kind of the the antidote or the opposite to the like solar season right so tara season it's been all this groundedness it's been all this earth-based stuff it's been all this slow down and be real scorpio is bringing the exact opposite right it's like scorpio is bringing through that transformation and transcendence the death and rebirth the unseen the unknown the the um, the non-materialized right so we're going into weirdness and it comes to my mind that the last time there was a if i if i remember this correctly 
you know my memory. But if I remember correctly, the last time there was a full moon solar eclipse, full moon lunar eclipse, full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio was in 2013. And the day of that eclipse, I found it in hindsight, was the single most transformational day of my entire life that set me on the path of the rest of my life since 2013. It it was the best day of my life and the most terrifying night of my life and is one of my favorite memories. It was just, it doesn't even matter like about the story. I'm not even gonna tell the story because it's just the feeling of that. Like best day of my life, most terrifying night of my life and most transformational period of my life that completely changed everything. So I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like I have no plans of doing anything next Sunday. I don't think anything's happening. So I, um, I don't know if this kind of energy is gonna be playing out just spiritually, right? Just, just mystically, just metaphysically or what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Four of Wands, so it's gonna be, this This confirms something for me because I was really feeling like, um, you know, is there like a like global message to this eclipse? Like is, like, is there a big thing? And I was really feeling, I think this is gonna be intimately personal, like intimately personal and private and kind of like centered around the home for everyone, right? So the Four of Wands is, is the home, is the home. So this is very personal, very private, very local to you, how it transforms you, right? Uh, how, how it shifts your trajectory. It's very, very personal. Um, because of that, I actually find it kind of hard to speak on. So I'm just going to draw a few more of these Oracle cards and just kind of see what other messages want to come through. You know, and earlier this morning, I just came across a poem that I have never read before. And it's funny because I think it's probably a kind of famous poem. And uh, I was a lit major and I used to teach poetry. So it's really funny that I haven't read it. Um, it's If by Rudolf Kipling. And I was really drawn to that. And before I even read it, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be the message for me. And I read it and I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I needed to hear right now. This is the message for me. So if anyone knows that poem or wants to check it out, it's not very long. Um, if, if by Kipling, um, yeah, that, that message is relevant here. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Just breathe. <laughs> just breathe. Right. I am finding this easier and easier. I have really been releasing a ton of frustration and like stuck feeling and standards and stuff lately. And over the past couple of days, I'm finally, um, it's with, with, with the help of the Syrians, right? The Syrians, they're really kind of pushing this, um, just, like getting very pragmatic. I'm very interested. This is the, I mean, I've connected with Syrians before, but this seems to be a very, this is different. This is different. They're coming through a lot more stronger now. And it's like a higher vibrational iteration of this higher Syrian consciousness. And they're very interesting because they're very pragmatic and they want us to be very pragmatic. They're essentially just like, look, your life is hard enough. Do whatever you need to do to feel better. And even like think the thoughts that you need to think in order to feel better. They're like, nothing really matters the way you think it does. Just figure out what's going to work for you. For them, it's like, what works? Does this work? Right? They don't really think of, they don't think black and white. They don't think right and wrong. They don't even think good or bad. They just think, does it work? Does it work? And of course, always, um, you know, with, with the caveat of do no harm, right? It, it, as long as you do no harm, do whatever you want, as long as it works. It's like, figure out what works, figure out what works. And the, really, they even mean that in terms of your consciousness, right? It's like dropping out of all of the, like, traditional wisdom, right? The kind of spiritual wisdom that we all, you know, like find useful, right? A lot of the spiritual wisdom that we've kind of learned, uh, the, their, their thing, the Syrians thing is kind of like toss it out the window. If, it, if it's not helping you feel better, if it's not helping you feel better, don't think about it. If like, if the thought isn't helping you feel better, don't think it. If the feeling isn't helping you feel better, don't engage it. Right? If that spiritual teaching or lesson or message or traditional wisdom isn't helping you, isn't working, then don't, have anything to do with it. It's like literally get really pragmatic about what works. And you know what works in terms of like, I think navigating this, <laughs> like th this crazy, crazy shit storm <laughs> of energy that is this Scorpio eclipse, right? Is going to be like, just breathe, drop out of everything, drop out of everything and just breathe, sit on a lotus pad, <laughs> sit on a lily pad here and just breathe, right? Imagine, imagine. I'm seeing this actually as your crown lighting up, your crown lighting up because 
you know, wow, I'm like getting like weakness in my arms all of a sudden. That is very strange. So, the, I don't even know how to describe this. This Scorpio energy is very difficult to articulate because it's literally the unseen. It is literally the unknown. It is literally the unmaterialized, right? So how do you put that into words? Um, and there's not really going to be a lot of putting it into words with Mercury going to be retrograding in Gemini, right? Um, so expect your consciousness to get strange. Expect your mind to get strange because you're going to be tuning into... This is like a, <laughs> what are you going to be tuning into? Chaos and conflict. But this is energetically speaking, right? Energetic chaos. This is like the, the, the energetic winds are roaring, right? There is an energetic storm, an energetic storm. And that doesn't mean bad, right? That doesn't mean bad. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I was actually talking about this yesterday because there is a, a travel YouTuber who I really love and admire and respect. Um, who goes and travels alone to all of these really crazy places that I would never go to alone. Oh my God. Um, and she does it completely like with full courage. <laughs> but you know, it's funny what, what scares her, what, 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 what she finds scary in her videos is like sleeping in the forest in a tent at night in, in the wind. That's what gets her. Um, and I, I was, that found that really interesting because she can go to these places on the planet alone as a solo female traveler. That I would never in a million years go. I wouldn't, I would just, I wouldn't do it. Right. <laughs> but she goes and she is safe and she thrives, but she finds sleeping in a tent in the wind in the forest to be quite stressful and scary and I was like I'm the complete opposite right there's places that I would just simply never go as a solo female traveler but I like for me camping in a tent in the forest in the wind to me that's exhilarating and that is beautiful right I, I just I love it and I realized um really that was that's because of my upbringing right my dad is like super outdoorsy kind of guy right like like a very just really down to earth like hands-on type of guy and we would always go camping when I was a kid like way out in the forest and yeah it was always storming and windy and crazy and like we had thunderstorms and you know the tent would be blowing away and we would just be out there like sitting on the tent holding it down and like just being getting stormed on and having like lightning like right overhead and stuff and um since that was my upbringing I never found that to be scary like I love storms even if I'm out in it like in it in a in a tent right um it just doesn't it just doesn't bother me I find it exhilarating and exciting um, and that's, you know, I can thank my, my parents for that. My parents for being so grounded and for being so um, connected to the earth and giving me those experiences as a child where I was able to like learn to thrive in the chaos that is mother nature, right? Like I, I like I'm so grateful for my parents for their energy being like that. Because you know their their energy is quite different than mine, right? Because they're they're very very grounded, um, and I am I strive I strive to be grounded. And and this this was a thing that when you know when I was growing up, I couldn't ever relate to them because I was so different from them, and I couldn't get it. Now I understand like why it was such a gift for them to be my parents because they like grounded my energy so hard and so beautiful, and I'm so grateful for that now. Um, so why am I talking about this? Um, <laughs> That's how you can be like in this energetic storm. It can be like being in the forest, in a thunderstorm, in the rain, in the wind, and it can be exciting and exhilarating, right? This energetic storm can be like that. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be scary at all because it can't actually hurt you. It can't, it can't, right? Just like being in a tent in a storm. I mean, the worst that happens, your tent flies away. Um, but I mean, you know, when your tent looks like it's going to throw, like fly away, you take steps to prevent that from happening. But if the wind gets really crazy, <laughs> look at this, come, come to the edge, right? This is come to the extremes of life, come to the extremes, but like dance, like she's dancing on the very edge and she's doing it with grace, right? Doing it with grace. She's not afraid to falling off the cliff because she knows that she has the balance to dance all the way to the edge. You know, so your your tent, right? In the in this energetic storm, your tent. If you feel like your tent is gonna fly away, well, I mean, even if it does fly away, if your whole tent flies away in the wind, you know what? You're you're still fine, even if you have to sit all night in the rain, in the wind, and you get soaked to the bone and it's cold. You know what? That's fine. You're fine. Nothing actually hurt you. It was just a crazy. It's gonna be a funny story later. You're gonna be telling that story for the rest of the, your life. The, the like the night that your tent flew away in the storm, and you had to sit all night soaked to the bone, just huddled up under a tree, <laughs> like listening to the the trees blow in the wind. Right? That's gonna be a really good story, and it's gonna be funny after the fact, and you're not actually in any danger. Right? So, uh, 
that's what this is gonna be like. The more you can just go for the ride, the more you can just be in the storm and find it exciting and find it beautiful, the easier this is gonna be, right? The easier this is gonna be. And okay, a couple other things I wanna mention is that this eclipse is Saturn and the nodes, the lunar nodes are both involved. So the sun is gonna be square to Saturn. Yeah, the sun, I'm trying to like, pull it up in my head, right? The sun is gonna be square to Saturn. So that means Saturn's putting pressure. <laughs> it's putting his, his pressure, right? Putting the pressure to, to let go and transform, to let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go like a stone, right? If you don't let go of the anchor, the anchor is gonna drag you down. You gotta let go of the anchor, right? Let go of the anchor. That's, that's Saturn's two cents on, with this eclipse. He's gonna be putting pressure to, so that you can let go of something. And um, I think the sun transits the north node it's like, I don't remember exactly, I'll put it in the box, but it, it's like very close. The eclipse is happening um, very close to the nodes. It's like within a couple of degrees. So to me, that means the, the nodes are involved, are involved, which is like the, the axis of destiny. Let's get like a card on like, what are the, what's the significance of the nodes being involved in this eclipse? <laughs> Getting you to express yourself getting you to express yourself, right? So we already know that about any Scorpio full moon is always very emotional and is it always people wanting to express something, right? Anything that has been repressed, wanting to be unleashed. I'm reminded that a year ago on the Scorpio full moon, that is when I first put my face on the internet. I told my Starseed Awakening story and for me that was terrifying because I was putting my face on the internet and saying that I, I think I'm an alien, right? I did that and um, it was very actually empowering and freeing, but it was terrifying to express that, right? Other people just have this more in their personal life where they just need to have a conversation with someone, really like express something to, to another person, like personally, right? So it's gonna be that, that pull to express what is hidden express what is hidden right bring make the unreal real making the unreal real and i i need this to be symmetrical so i'm getting one getting one more card here because wow we got seven 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 three three interesting seven of cups dragonfly that this is a very interesting depiction of the dragonfly. I want to, um, the very interesting depiction of the seven of cups, isn't it? Typically with the seven of cups, you see, um, all of those seven cups, right? Here we have this dragonfly, which is, or maybe it's a damselfly of, that's another symbol of transformation. Let's see what the message is here. Yeah, okay, so it's a Pacific Forktail Damselfly. Dreams, imagination, fantasy, daydreaming, illusions, choices, and indecision. Down here, it is dark and quiet. The water flows smoothly along its winding currents, and the sediment and lily leaves collaborate to cast the muddy floor in shade. But if you look up, you might catch a glimpse of light and color. The image will be distorted, dreamlike, a flash of lapis lazuli, a strobing diamond flicker timed to rapid wing beats, a cripple of deep black that catches the sun like opal. To see it clearly, you'll have to approach, pursue, leave behind the safe familiarity of the underwater glade and vault into the light. Wow, that is the message, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Leave behind the safe familiarity of the underwater glade and vault into the light. The sunlight will stun you into momentary blindness and the muffled murmur of the water will give way to a roar of crashing and burbling. But regaining your bearings, you can see the damsel fly clearly, free from refractions. Up close, it looks only a little like you expected, but no less spectacular. Oh my God, oh my God, that is such a cool message for the Seven of Cups that is so interesting. No other deck would have brought that message. So that whole thing of you coming up out of the water. Um, and to me, this, this it, I'm gonna tweak that a bit and say, you're actually coming up out of the earth, right? You're coming up out of the earth into like the quantum. You're coming up out of the earth into the quantum because that's, that's what this is about, right? You're rising up out of the Taurus, sea, like the Taurus earth energy into the unknown of the watery, etheric Scorpio energy. And um, coming back to what I was talking about at the very beginning about how, you know, me and many of you watching this who resonate with this um, are like transcending the self. Basically, you're going through this process of ego 
it's not not necessarily all of you are going to have like complete ego death experiences although some of you could but it's like this e like releasing of the ego right releasing of egoic structures um like a, like another round of that and transcending into a hitherto unknown quantum state <laughs> right like, like transcending up out of what you have been into something entirely new and that will be reflected in your physical life in some way in your human experiences but first it's going to be experienced like energetically spiritually mystically metaphysically right it's going you're it, it's like i don't know i don't have specific words i don't feel like i can get detailed on this because how, it's something you haven't seen before. It's something you can't conceive of. It's Scorpio. It is the thing that is entirely hidden. It is the thing that is entirely hidden. It is this, like, different quantum soup of possibility, right? You, in your reality, in yourself, in your universe, this is, like, one quantum soup of probability, but you're going to be, like, coming in contact with or reaching out to or learning to perceive something that comes from an, an entirely different quantum soup of probability. And you see my hands keep doing that? I don't entirely, I don't know what that is, but that's something. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to uh, call it, <laughs> going to call it here because I don't know how to get any more specific. These are just the vibes. These are the vibes, guys. And whew. I have no idea. I have no idea. Don't expect anything. Just let go and go for the ride. That is literally the only thing we can do at this point. So I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.